Good morning, or afternoon, or evening. I had my nails done yesterday, so I thought that, along with the fact that we're going away at the weekend and I want to start packing my craft things, um, it would be a good time to podcast. And I um, also had a shower, so my hair's not sticking to my head. It's like my blouse. My friend gave me this on our weekend away, Leone. We went away for a weekend shortly after I last podcasted. And, um, oh, we had such a lovely time. It was really, really good fun. We only see each other once a year. Um, and we meet in London. She lives in Essex. I live in Somerset, near Bristol, southwest of England. And uh, we meet once a year. Oh, it's just lush. I think I've talked about how we met in a previous podcast, but um, we met through work and it was a bit of a romantic story, if, like a friendly friendship romance type thing. Um, I'm going to try not to um and ah and go because I do that a lot and I've been watching Sherry Iris, lovely, lovely podcast, lovely woman. Uh, she, she really makes me giggle with her. One last thing. Um, she's been going... Or rather, she hasn't, but she was worrying that she was doing that. And um, also Vicky, West Green, Loft Yarns. She's been worrying that she does that. Anyway, now I'm focusing on it, so... It, oh, and so will you be. Shot myself in the foot there, haven't I? What was I going on about? My weekend away with Leone. Oh, we had such a giggle. We really had such a lovely time. It was wonderful. I made something to take away with me to wear but I didn't end up wearing it uh, because I hadn't finished it. I ended up wearing my very old oriental black silk shawl. It must be, I don't know, 1850, something like that. It's almost disintegrating but I absolutely love it. <laughs> On the Friday night, Leonie and I had, um, we'd had a couple of drinks and we'd had something to eat and we decided that we were going to pop over to the co-op opposite the hotel. Now, we were staying in a really trendy, fun, young, vibrant, going for it hotel, but we found ourselves at quarter past ten in the co-op over the road buying munchies, <laughs> a boat, a boat, a bouquet bunch of daffodils, and um, uh, I think a bottle of wine for the next night for when we were getting ready to go out. <laughs> She didn't want to walk through this hip and happening bar carrying a plastic co-op bag. So she made me take my shawl off. So I had to walk through the bar wearing skinny trousers, t uh, jeans, and a vest top. It's not a good look. It was not attractive. <laughs> but at least nobody saw her with her co-op bag. Anyway, I'll go and get the thing. It's hanging up over there that I was going to make, the thing that I was going to wear, I mean, that I had made. Oh, I'm rambling, aren't I? So this is what I was going to wear. Do you recall, and if you haven't watched it, don't go back, don't go back there, I beg you. My first podcast. Do you recall on my first podcast, I had this beautiful, beautiful silk, 100% pure silk, fabric and I was going to make an uh, an under, under slip dress out of it. Anyway, I, it just sat there and sat there for another year and then I decided it's too beautiful to be underneath clothes, it needs to be a kimono top. So I started making this to go away with but I didn't finish it because it took longer than I anticipated. It's like, it's like liquid gold isn't it? I love it. So beautiful. Can it be seen from where you are there? Can you see? It's just a very simple kimono top. Armholes. The back just when it's on when it's on you properly, it kind of sits like this. So you get this gorgeous drapey effect. It was very easy to make. Obviously, I did a prototype first. I did this one as a prototype. Don't know why I was so aggressive then. This one, Whew. um, out of some Liberty 
Liberty Cotton Lawn because I thought this would be nice around a swimming pool when you're on your zolly bobs. Not that I sit out in the sunshine around a swimming pool. I'm the one that you can find sitting underneath some shade with my knitting. My hair's getting on my wick, so let me just tie it up. bunches lately and I've really been feeling very cute. I tend to dress like a fat toddler, so or tubby toddler, so uh, bunches fit that look I think. Hmm, this was my prototype then. Let's see if I can put it on. It actually look really cool with a simple camisole top and a pair of white jeans. We are. Super duper simple. I've got a piece of paper here so I can explain how I did it. This is my fabric. Folded it in half. I had to think then what I did. Folded it in half. I cut up the middle Two and a half to a halfway point. Isn't it great that through the power of editing, you don't have to see half of my farting about? So you end up with a piece of fabric like this. Then I did a narrow hem with my narrow hem of foot all the way around the perimeter. And then I put some binding on here in the V easier to see that on this silk one than this flowery one. Can you see that? There. Which kind of gives it a slight effect of having a collar. Um, and then I stitched from this point, that's the armhole, down there. very easy and this took me no time at all this we fell out a few times I can tell you me and that shawl we weren't mates and that is why I had to step away from it and not take it away with me on my weekend away because I was at the point of uh, wanting to launch it all out the window narrow hammer feet on your sewing machine, they're brilliant when they work. What the heck is going on with my hair now? I don't know why I've gone all cockney. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Never do your hair on film. I just had to pause to sort my barnet out. Uh, I wanted to throw it out of the window, but I didn't. I just very calmly, this is this just proves how much I'm growing up, very calmly folded it away and I said, I'll see you later when you're prepared to behave yourself. And um, all was forgiven by the time I started stitching it up again. <clears throat> and obviously because I was feeling triumphant from having stitched, I nearly said knitted, stitching that together, I then popped to John Lewis and I bought another little piece of silk to make a top to go with black jeans because um, I was supposed to be going out for my birthday for some lunch, an early lunch and early cocktails with some girls, some of my girlfriends and uh, my mate was poorly with shingles so we didn't go in the end but I made this to, to wear. Uh, it's very similar to the kimono. I just didn't do the split up the front and I made the front shorter than the back. And actually I need to unpick some of this neckline because it, it was too together. Too small, the neckline was too small. Anyway, that's waiting for 
any occasion that I go out. Not that I do that very often. I used to be quite a girl about town in my high heel shoes and a drink with a cocktail umbrella and a plastic monkey dangling off the side. <laughs> Pina colada. Uh, not so much anymore. I prefer to knit and watch telly and drink tea or wine, mostly tea. Today I'm drinking David's tea. We can't get this in the UK, but Sandy by the lakeside. She sent me some when we did a swap. She really spoilt me and I was a little bit mortified that my swap things that I sent her were a bit rubbish by comparison. And I've done another swap as well with my mate Lisa. Um, I'll show you in a minute. And again, I think that I did much better than she did out of it, so I might not do any more swaps. But I try so hard to be thoughtful and not too generous because I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable, but then not under generous. <laughs> I never feel like I gauge it quite right. Anyway, walnut and orange scone. Do you say scone or do you say scone? Do you do your jam first or your cream first? Depends whether you're Devonish or Cornish. Now I was born in Devon but I have lived in Cornwall so I split my scone scone in two and I do one side cream then jam and one side jam then cream and I think that makes everybody happy and I can say I can do what I please because it's my scone scone and I'm eating it. Anyway the good thing about this um, David's tea is the sachet and over wrap are 100% oxo biodegradable because I'm on a bit of a thing where I'm really trying hard to reduce my plastic footprint and I'm really enjoying doing it actually it's um I've made friends with my butcher I've got a veg box delivery now well I pick it up I don't have it delivered this is just down the road and um, all all number of things it's uh this podcast might go on a bit long and I'm sure you're here for the sewing and the knitting stuff not about my talk about rubbish I don't know where to go now. I don't know what to talk about next. Um, do you remember? <clears throat> I dyed some yarn way, way back with Kool-Aid and it went very, very bubblegum pink. But I persevered and I knitted it into the Pebble Beach shawl. Oh, Amy, I've forgotten to text you back and tell you that it was the Pebble Beach shawl. Amy formerly Little Telluress, now Dogwood, Dandelion and Dogwood, or is it Dogwood and Dandelion? That's what it is. Um, she offered to over-dye the shawl for me and she, she gave a few suggestions and uh, I picked denim blue. Is that not great? I think Amy has inadvertently hit on something here because it's not easy to knit on a dark colour yarn with a dark colour yarn when the light is fading and when you're a lady of certain age with certain eye failings. Um, so to knit this in a nude yarn and then send it to a dyer to work their magic on it. Wow. That's brill, isn't it? So, this is now going to be worn heaps. I'm taking this on my holiday with me. Oh, I love it. And she sent this as well. So not only did she pay for the postage for the shawl to be returned to me, she dyed the shawl for me and she sent me a little doodah. It's a mermaid, a little progress keeper. Is that? <laughs> oh, flaming neck. It's a mermaid. She's very cute. Except she doesn't actually have a face. She just has two backs of her head. 
I've just noticed. I'm going to have to see if I can show you. I'm not sure if I managed to show you or not. Anyway. Isn't it lovely? Couldn't be more chuffed. I knitted this when we were in Greece last year on Toby's windsurfing holiday. It's, it's his love, love of his life windsurfing, but we don't really have the weather or the wind or the water for it up where we live. So we go to Greece once a year. Well, we have done the last two years. And um, yeah, it feels like, everything feels like it's coming full circle. So um, this is coming back with me as a completed article in a different colour. Love it. Thank you, Amy. You're a beautiful girl, you always. Right, so as I said, I wanted to podcast. Oh, man overboard. Oh, Lord. Oh, I just sat in my cup of tea, but it's fine. It's fine. Don't panic. As I said, I wanted to podcast because I'd had my nails done, and also I want to take my projects in this project bag that Sandy sent to me. Boo! Boo? It's beautiful. Look, I love it. Oh, I'm sure you've all seen Sandy's work because half of you guys came here from her in the first place. Um, lovely stylish card. That, to me, is just very, very sandy. They're, they're kind of her colours, aren't they? That's her lipstick. That one and that one is her nail polish. That's her eyeliner. They're her eyebrows. <laughs> just need blue for those beautiful eyes of hers. Yeah. So, um, she sent me a bag load of goodies, including the tea and some makeup and perfume samples and um, a lollipop and stationery. Gosh, I was so spoiled. Teeny tiny little bag as well. It's not actually that teeny tiny. I reckon you'd get two sock projects in there. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Some pencils. See, now I can use all of these. Sorry about the light. I wonder if it's because I'm wearing navy blue. I wonder what I could do about that. Oh, is that driving you mad? I'm so sorry. One moment, please. Isn't that strange? I've pulled the blind down, so the room is now darker. Oh, but I look... It's the dress, isn't it? What shall I do about that? I'll just carry on for now, I think. Oh, no, I can't, can I? I'm going to have to take my dress off. Hold on. Oh, I'm stuck in it. Okay, now what am I going to put on my bottom half? Okay. Pebble Beach shawl to the rescue. <laughs> oh God, now it's super dark. Maybe it was my white top. No. I think it might be the top. Hang on. This is ridiculous. No one comes to the door. <laughs> what am I to do? <sighs> no good. Nothing seems to be working. Oh, now I'm tangled up. <sighs> I'm really sorry if it bugs you. Just switch off. Look, <laughs> stop. Like I've been pulled through a hedge backwards. Ah, I'm dropping things. Back to things that I got in my little 
bag of bag of tricks I got by the lakeside pin. I'm getting a collection of pins now. It was never something I thought that would happen, but I've been sent some. So there we go. There will be a collection. Some stationary pieces. Love that. You won't be able to see because I won't be able to get it to focus because technical hitch. Here's another pin. So I can put these places now. That is one of her project bags. Thanks, Sandy. Beautiful. Love it all. And this, along with scrumptious pearl yarn, has been on my yarn wish list for such a long time. This is um, Knit Picks Felici Saltwater Taffy. Blanching out. But, hmm. It's really, really incredibly soft. It's merino wool and 25% nylon, so it, it's probably really strong. And you can machine wash and tumble dry, but it feels too soft to be durable. But it's a bestseller, so I'm sure it's perfect for socks. So thank you very much. Loved everything. You were so kind about what I sent you, but we all know it was a pile of pants. <laughs> okay. So the things I'm going to take on holiday to knit are... Uh, I'm not going to take my Pohi boxy because it's not finished. It's no way near finished. I would probably finish it while I was out there, but then I wouldn't have any means to block it. So I wouldn't be able to wear it. So what is the point? Therefore, here it is. Now, I've gone wrong a couple of times and had to unpick it purely down to the fact that I can't count and I don't double check things enough. So I've had to rip back six inches, start again. This is Amy's yarn, maybe baby. She's just done a beautiful boho blush shawl. And I think she's selling kits in her shop now. Dandelion and dogwood. Dandelion and dogwood. Um, so run over there and pre-order. It's gonna be lovely when it's finished. It's very drapey and gorgeous, but of course you can't tell. I don't know why I showed you. Why did I show you? Ah, oh, I'm halfway through a row. Just gonna pop some hand cream on. One nice thing about going away for a week, not being self-catering, is that my hands will recover somewhat, so all those nasty burrs and painful bits around the edge of my thumbs where my hands get so dry from washing up and cleaning. And I've been doing a lot of gardening lately, doing the garden. Your hands just take a beating, don't they? There we go. I am taking to finish some socks that I have on the go in my little project bag I made donkeys donkeys ago um, with my yarn brewery yarn, the secret garden this is really getting on my wick, it's never this bad usually I wonder if I can lighten it all up and smooth it out during the editing Anyway, Emily dyes this yarn from Meanwhile at the Castle. Last podcast was all about those girls. This is just the Cafe Latte sock, which is Pearl 2, Knit 6. It's a freebie, so that's not a problem to tell. You could work it out just by looking at it anyway. Put in a... It's like a whirlwind toe, but it's a heel. And a yarn, barn barn toe. But I think what I'm going to do, because this one's a bit too small, is I'm going to redo the heel in a green that I've got to match the green flex 
and knit a little bit more and then have pink toes because I really love the pink with the blue and the green and if it's on my heel I won't see it as much as if it's on my toe so I'm taking those to finish and I'm taking this to finish this hasn't got a heel in yet that's a different pink it's not the same and I think I'm going to do a blue heel for these I think this was Somerset yarn or Sunshine Stuart yarn and it's the candy floss pattern candy floss sock pattern by Emily of the yarn brewery meanwhile at the castle and her sister Deborah who I spoke about a lot last podcast because she asked if I wouldn't mind test knitting her love entwined cowl which I jumped at the chance and I did show you the startings of it and I've now finished it I knitted it from egg the eggplant colour of the uh, Malabrigo sock and it is eggplant colour which you're not going to be able to see and that's all I have left out of a single skein so it's a single skein project there's a photograph of this on my Instagram and I still haven't done a Ravelry wow Ravelry Ravelry page but I will um, and it's just divine it's a shame really that we're coming into summer because I know I'd wear this a lot you can't see can you you can't see this podcast is a shambles oh now it's stuck on my head Hey, I don't look bad with brown hair. I really enjoyed knitting this. It's a lovely little project. I recommend it to anyone and everyone. So that can be packed away now until the autumn. And knowing me, I'll forget that I've got that. And when I find it, it will be like finding a present special present. <sighs> Emily's knitted, uh, she's designed another sock and she's put out for test knitters. She asked if I'd test knit and I said of course I will. So I'm going to be taking this on holiday with me. It's the Aria sock and she spoke about it on their latest podcast and I'm going to use the Louisa May Alcott sock yarn. Um, did she write Little Women? I think she did. So, And I've downloaded that on my audio, Audible um, app. So I will listen to that while I knit the Aria socks from this. Looking forward to doing that. So obviously that is going to live in this. That's not a bad pairing. There's a contrast. So yeah, that can go in there. Oh, that David's tea smells amazing. I haven't lit a, um, a smelly candle because I didn't need to because of this. It's gone cold now, but it would still be nice and tasty. But I'm getting a bit of a sore throat. Bill's had a cough and a sore throat all week and I think I'm getting it. So I don't really want to have a cold drink. I just want warm drinks. Um, I've been following a podcast and an Instagram account called um, The Wooden Nest. Or is it A Wooden Nest? I wish I was more clear. I'll let you know here. Yeah. Lady called Lindsay. She's got such a lovely manner about her. She's very gentle and soothing and incredibly inspiring. I've been enjoying fermenting foods and uh, kefir. And I'd been looking into kombucha and I'd ordered a SCOBY um, and then Lindsay kind of gave me the confidence to go for it and uh, I now have a continuous brew of kombucha on the go and I absolutely love it to the point where I'm getting a bit anxious about going away next week because I can't take my sauerkraut, my kombucha and my kefir with me, and I eat those things every day now, and I love them. I crave and pine for them if I haven't had them. 
Um, I suppose I could take my sauerkraut. Yeah, but I'm really going to miss the rest of it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so thank you, Lindsay, for all of that inspiration. She's doing a knit-along, and it's called the hand-dyed knit-along. I thought I would join in with that because I've kind of enjoyed my foray, tiny foray into dyeing yarn and fabric and uh, I'd collected some avocado stones so I thought I'll just do a nice pinky avocado dye bath but something went wrong. It's horrible! It's so horrible! It's like a rusty, nasty colour. It's not like a nice mustardy colour. I'm sure it will look really lovely in some Fair Isle. So all is not lost. I won't bin it. But I'm not loving it. But it didn't put me off. I then, when I was making my red cabbage sauerkraut, and I was so mesmerised by the colours that were coming out and the colours my hands were going, I um, decided I would have a go at doing a red cabbage bath and the colour was such a lovely blue, a bluey purple. So I'd soaked my yarn in water and citric acid because I'd read somewhere that that's what you do to make the colour stick um, and then I plunged it into my beautiful blue dye bath and it went pink. <laughs> kind of a blue pink. This is not horrible at all, but it's not what I wanted. Anyway, I think I'm going to do a teeny tiny cable knit. Um, what are they called? Those things you pour water in when it's chilly in the evening. They're made of rubber, hot water bottle. And I might even adapt Deborah's Love Entwined Cowl, the cables, to make it. I think that would look really pretty. So there's a plan with that. <clears throat> Just going through my pile, I'm just talking about things as they fall into my hand. Um, so, this podcast seems to be about terrible lighting, waffling. <gasps> What's happened? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> oh dear. Can do. There we go. <laughs> Terrible lighting and swaps. That's what this podcast has been about. I'm so out of practice. I keep looking at myself and talking to myself. <laughs> I mentioned Vicky from West Greenloft Yarns the other earlier on, and um, we did. Um, she said she contacted me and said I'd like to send you some of my yarn to try. So I jumped at the chance because there's not ever been one of my motivations for doing this podcast. I never wanted to have a podcast where I ran giveaways and got freebies and did marketing for other people or to use it as a way of marketing myself even though naturally that's kind of how it's become because I'm, I've am i started sewing and selling things in my little shop which is such a pleasure to be able to do. I can't get a job I did work in my friend's cafe, but the cafe closed. I can't find a job that is 10 till 2, term time only, that gives me enough flexibility to be off with my boys if they're poorly, or that pays me enough money to cover childcare for three children, one of which has, has got considerable additional needs. So to be able to contribute to our family running costs by doing something that I really enjoy is a real gift and I am so appreciative and grateful. I, I don't just take it lightly. Is that even a phrase? Anyway, Vicky asked me, having watched some of my podcasts, would I like to try some of her yarn? Of course I said yes. I mean, I'd have said yes anyway, even if I didn't like her yarn because I'd feel like a complete meanie saying no. I don't like your yarn, give it to somebody else. However, 
I love, love what Vicky does. She is an absolute perfectionist. She does inspire me to be more tidy and to complete things. I was about to say complete things before I finish them, but to complete things before I start new things. Anyway, look at this. Can you see? It's called Sugar. Merino nylon, 25% nylon. It's a sock set. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Isn't that lovely? Back to me, back to me. I've never had trouble like this before. Even when I did that podcast in my car, I didn't have trouble with the lighting. Anyway, what can I say about Vicky? If you watch her podcast, West Green Loft Yarns, then you will get a total picture of how she operates. Everything is considered, everything is beautiful. Everything. She's organized, tidy. Did I say that she's organized and tidy? She's tidy. <laughs> she's my hero. <laughs> um, but her branding's beautiful. She sent me a pin, so I now I have three pins. I. Actually, I did have a pin given to me years and years ago, and I know exactly where it is, but it will take me too long to go and grab it now. And it says, it was from my lovely friend Jem, who I've been friends with since A-level school, um, and it says, knitting to stay sane. Ain't that the truth? I sent um, Vicky some of my uh, little yarn pods that I make, um, I looked through her Instagram feed and I saw a project bag that she'd made out of some Tilda fabric, um, so I had some of that, so I used that to line them and the outside is just this beautiful, beautiful cotton linen, don't know what it is, old, 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 God, so just, just don't make fabric like they used to, so beautiful. Not saying that the yarn pods are beautiful. I'm not blowing my own trumpet. I mean, they, I liked them. I thought they were really nice. In fact, they I didn't want to send them to her because I really wanted to keep them because I don't have any yarn pods for myself. <laughs> I wonder if I've got time to make a couple before I go away. I don't think I do. They were nice, actually. <laughs> Ugh, I cringe when I say things like that. Admitting something like that out loud, is really, how do you do it? It's really hard. How do you go, oh, look at this thing that I've made. It's really great. I love it. I'm putting it in my shop. Please buy it without sounding like a big head because you guys don't sound like big heads, but I feel like I do. Another swap that I did was with Lisa. Lisa Handmakes on Instagram, who has, if any of you know and love her like most of us do, um, then you'll have been following her journey to motherhood and um, she has, oh, she's had a dreadful time with ectopic pregnancies, the loss of fallopian tubes, failed IVF attempts, um, everyone around her falling pregnant, miscarriages, oh my goodness, just heartbreaking anyway. I could cry. I could literally cry telling you. <laughs> that she's having twins. And I didn't know this when we, we um, she was doing random acts of kindness and probably because she wanted to thank the universe that, the, that her last round of IVF had taken. Uh, and um, I didn't notice, I didn't enter this random act of kindness, but she does beautiful embroidery. And um, she, I'm saying I'm a lot. And I messaged, I left a mess comment on her Instagram saying, oh, pants, I missed out on that. And... Um, and she said, oh, so do you want to do a swap? I said, wow, absolutely, lovely. So I made her those um, yarn pods that I showed on my last podcast with the little sheep, because she lives up where it's quite sheepy. Um, anyway, she sent this. It's so pretty. She sent a load of things, actually. Um, yarn, chocolate, perfume, Laura Ashley, 
lovely it's beautiful um and she sent this that she had sewn it's gorgeous i love it this frame it's not shown here but it's a really beautiful dusky pink but where i want to put this the frame color doesn't work so i'm either going to put something else in the frame and put this elsewhere or paint the frame slightly different color i don't think lisa will mind because she is she's such an inventive crafter she does loads of brilliant things so I think that she'd be egging me on all the way. Um, I've nearly come to the end. I just need to go and check my notes. Hold on, my throat's getting really sore. There's nothing else for me to talk about. I was gonna talk about doing some crochet because I've been um, watching Ollie and Bella's podcast. Um, I think her name's Sherry as well. Hang on a minute. Just look it up. Yeah, she is. She lives in Plymouth, which is where I was born. She's a Devon dumpling like what I am. Anyway, I've been watching her podcast and following her Instagram. And um, she has inspired me to pick up my hook again. I've probably just cut the load out because I was waffling and nothing, none of it made sense. And I started and I stopped and I started and I stopped dozens of times <laughs> and now I've lost my train of thought anyway I'm following Ollie dot and dot Bella on Instagram she has a podcast and um, I found her because she messaged me and said oh I've just done a podcast and spoken about you and I thought oh I'll pop over and have a look she's great she's great fun there she is oh, she's got on her head <laughs> she's a beautiful girl She's beautiful. Anyway, um, she makes some go I keep saying anyway a lot. She makes some really gorgeous things from crochet. Let me show you this. It's this sort of thing. She's doing it with a gradient. That makes me think I might like to pick up my hook. But I picked up my hook to help prepare a blanket a while back. And I did not enjoy it. Um, I didn't enjoy the yarn. It was horrible acrylic-y stuff it's squeaking in my hand and I um, was a bit under pressure at the time and I can't remember why anyway and it really made my hand ache as well but Sherry's made me think maybe it is time to find a new hook an ergonomic one or hold my hook a bit differently I hold it like a pencil not like a shovel so we'll see We'll see, I might, I might have a go. I wasn't going to talk about crochet, I was going to say goodbye, but instead I ended up talking about crochet and waffling on. I'm up to 48 minutes on the timer there, and I think that is way too long for anyone to sit with me. So <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye, and um, I'll see you, if anyone's still watching, I'll see you another day. Maybe, if you come back. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>